Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy folks every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach him every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, I love that we get to talk to you on Wednesday, Fed Day. Good morning, man. Good morning, Tommy. So where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, there's a lot to talk about today. <laughs> That's It's so open-ended, man, but I was jumping around. Uh, I saw the yen doing some action there. We got Fed Day. Let's kick it off with the Fed. As a Forex trader, um, what's your approach on Fed Day as we come into a pretty volatile statement, potentially? Uh, I think it's going to keep most of the markets quiet and the currencies for the most part. Uh, I think you got the dollar index, which is hovering below its highs right now. Right now, I think you're going to probably see the dollar under a little bit of pressure going into the lunchtime trade, not much. Uh, and you got to remember that right now the dollar is on its highs, you know, so any type yes. of downtick in the dollar is not bearish. It's profit taking and it's just it's 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 normal right now, especially in this environment on a day like today. You know, so I think that you're going to see more traders are pondering, you know, the Monday morning quarterback, Jamie Dimon, and his comment today. You know, it's kind of funny how he was pro-Fed, pro-interest rates being low. And all of a sudden he's like, you know, they should have raised rates a long time ago. <laughs> he wasn't saying a year ago that they should be raising rates, sure. you know. So, uh, but I think that's what you're going to see today is the people are just pondering a lot of jibber jabber until the Fed releases their comment. Um, I agree with a lot of the, the talk about them talking about more than just a half a point over the next couple meetings, you know, and if half point pops, uh, we've been talking about that already for six months, <laughs> that they should be doing that, you know, so uh, I think that that's mostly what you're going to hear about. Um, they're going to still um, start to acknowledge the fact that inflation does exist. They can't deny that anymore, you know, and I think that they're going to have to probably change their speak also being that they're going to have to agree with the fact that the consensus that inflation is here to stay it's not going away anytime soon um i mean the reality is i think it's you're, you're going to see this the, the actions of the fed right now they're chasing this curve sure but we have a we have a contracting uh economy you know and i've been saying you know for months i said at the beginning of the uh, last year in the fall that this should be the year of the economic numbers now they're all lagging you know so that means that where we are is a lot worse than what we're seeing on the on these sheet and the, just on a balance sheet basis you yeah. know so and i think that the markets no matter what they're forward thinking and tr the, <laughs> the traders are very aware of this environment i mean anyone that doesn't acknowledge the fact that inflation if you think that we saw inflation this year wait till we're we are in a year from now, you know, I mean, just think about your grocery store, okay, or, or even a gas right now, you're spending three times what you were paying for gas 14 months ago. That's not changing. I, I would guarantee you that this time next year, you're paying at least a dollar and a half to $2 more for gas on average, no matter what, you know, no matter what we do. <clears throat> then think about your cost of food, you know, your cost of food, just think about walking down the aisle, minor things that are actually pretty reasonable price and you don't really think about their numbers. Look at pasta, pasta's up 50 to 100% in the past six months. Where do you think that's going to be in a year from now? Pasta is a high margin item for a lot of restaurants, you know, sure. this is gonna impact the economy. Think about it, where do like your big chain restaurants make all their money on? Alcohol sales and things like pizza, pasta dishes because their margins are super high. Now all of a sudden you take out the one last component in these industries where your margins are high and you shrink them radically very quickly. How fast is the economy gonna contract then? You know, and I think that <clears throat> this is going to cause a lot of market swings. It's going to definitely impact the stock market huge, you know, and with the with the Fed being on a raising interest rate policy, you know, the dollar is going to remain strong for at least in the short run, too, because of this. So a strong dollar may be may look good on the economic on the chart. Um, but when you think about what it's really where the value is, the value of the purchasing power of the dollar is crashing. You know, sure. so and I had a, here's an interesting um, take. I was out this week and I was with a friend who had company in town from the Europe. One was from the UK, one was from the EU. And I asked them both, both of them are businessmen too. And I said, so uh, is the Bank of England and the EU, are you gonna start to defend your currency and start at least talking about doing so like Japan? And uh, the first thing the guy from the UK said is like, we don't have enough bullets to defend our currency. Yeah, and the and the guy from the EU said the same thing, and he's like, also their environment as far as what they really have been trying to push and what they're trying to push moving forward is in contrary to what you would be doing, you know. So if that's truly the case, then you're going to see the dollar index continue. Right now, any break in the dollar index is going to be a break to buy, 
you know. So and I would say it's a profit taking move. Like today, the euro is up, the pound's up, the Australian dollar. We have a buy signal from yesterday in the Australian dollar. Here's the problem: is every single buy signal, and I always that's why I say don't try and pick pick a bottom. Right now, it's a corrective move. That no matter what, if you look at the trend, but it can't even hold a correction. A correction now only lasts for a day. Instead of being a three, four, five day trend, even if it's not that extreme in direction as far as how much price movement you get, at least you would maintain that momentum. You cannot m maintain momentum against the dollar right now for more than two days. And and that's something that is, is I think all Forex traders need to take into account is that like we've been talking about, the trends right now are very extreme and you can ride these trends and be and just be aware of that. You know, I mean, sure. the trend is your friend is an old adage, but the, the geopolitical activity of what's going on right now supports it in such a big way that, I mean, your technicals are out the window. I mean, if you're using any type of indicators, overbought, oversold, <laughs> we know that they're all lagging. Well, they're getting crushed There's, and yeah. they're going to continue to get crushed for the next couple of years, you know. So and I think like oil, too. After today, we got the oil numbers coming out, Fed meeting. I wouldn't doubt that we see an upside breakout. And if we do, once we get above 110, 116 is a heartbeat away, and then we're back up challenging 130. You know, I mean, I told you before, like 150 oil by the end of the summer, I think may come a lot quicker. And $200 oil is, it's on the table. It's not going away. There's Those are some statements, gonna, man. I was going to ask you, if you're yeah. looking for gas prices up a buck or two, where does that put crude? Um, that would put in that realm, if you're right looking at 150 right okay. there. So now okay. if we're looking at $200 oil. Then you're looking at, you know, we'll be paying $8 a gallon for gas. Well, I hope that's not the case. We'll see what happens, you know, man. But it's a so, dicey scenario for sure. Right. Uh, and you got the den. You got the den all riled up, man. You got my dad <laughs> riled up in there with pasta prices. It's it's Prince Spaghetti Day Wednesday. And, uh, I know. I but, yeah, know I, I'm, I'm a pasta fan. This, I don't like <laughs> this any more than you do. I'm telling nice. you. Um, but if you, you can, the average person who doesn't even know markets can can see this happening. Oh, for sure, you know? man. And, for and, sure. And if, you see, and if you see this happen, think about this. How much is it going to cost to plant this year? How much is wheat going to cost? You know, the, the fundamental parts of things like that that, you know, you, do, you don't normally think about, you know, because there is such a huge supply. We know the supply is going to be shrinking no matter yeah. what. And the cost of that supply is going up because of artificial, you know. Sure. Things, no, I, I've know, been talking about in the beginning of the program. I see a lot of risks in terms of, you know, the Fed. I think everybody knows Jamie yeah. Dimon. Yeah, that, that we were late to the party. I think that's probably pretty much consensus if you're paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty dicey scenario when well, where do the risk lie? The risk lie, man, that the Fed uh, might figure out they have to hike and they have to hike pretty quickly. And like you say, there's right. a lot of economic indicators that make things maybe a little bit tough as we go forward, as they keep hiking. And we're all mm -hmm. facing some pretty tough situations, man, with whether right. it's gas inflation uh the likes well teddy i wish we could do all our men uh I thank know, you so much it? for the update and we will US talk to you next wednesday rally, though new highs on the yen before we talk next new week. highs yeah. on the yen i love it we'll take a look thanks so much Under teddy pressure. have a great week man we'll take talk care. to you next wednesday